What's up, y'all? Got a film of the feed, so let's get into this tea. We about to get into Corey and Danny evicted, must vacate in three days. Dwayne explain why he didn't buy a house with Neek. Let's get it. So as you guys know, Corey's girlfriend, Danny, has many business establishments. Now she has a tax service. She opened up the Peach Factory in Dallas. Now she also owned a mental health facility in Dallas, which is where she was housing mental health patients. Now it appears that the house that she was renting for those patients, she's now getting evicted. It states that she has a three day notice to vacate for non-payment of rent. You guys remember Corey was also evicted from his apartment in Miami for non-payment. So now Danny goes on to Facebook and she posts, I'm just like my man. One of the facilities chance to change wasn't meeting the goal. So I'm closing that one 800 per month per resident wasn't making the cut. So who is about to continue to take money from their personal accounts to run that second home? So clock that T. I'm closing that one and I'm not paying ish until the state pay me. Also, I just hired an assistant last week and just fired her this week because I found out her family had a tax business. Oh yeah, and she said she sent it to Arsenio Hall, which was hilarious. And I provided her with 150 emails to send out out contracts to my tax partners and she sent those emails to Arsenio Hall and they <laughs> sent out a mass email. This is why I can't trust you Arsenio jealous Hall and Elvis. Was hilarious. Back to another country next week. Kenya, here we come. So now Sherelle, the girl that's been exposing Danny for everything, went to explain in full detail what happened and how Danny put a lot of people out on the streets by closing that house. To be low down and dirty, but to sit there when people are literally at their wits end, have nowhere to go, nobody to turn to, and they've pretty much given everything to you and you act like you don't care. You ignoring them or you pretending like so much other shit in your life is so much better than so much more important than the shit that you actually have going on. The shit is sick. Y'all was asking me for a backstory behind Danny. Sherelle is sick of Danny ass. And she claimed to be this <laughs> prolific ass millionaire. It 14 million hilarious. up. All these different businesses. Some being funded by the federal government. Others where she got the IRS in her pocket and she paying them $25,000, $30,000 to keep from auditing her and all this other shit. The same person who claims to be buying all of these I'll different all, all establishments, the owning, basically said, uh, know. apartments, condos, whatever the fuck it is, out of the country. A person who claims to have paid cash for so much shit is really out here fucking over people's lives. Now, I just posted that she was getting evicted from the mental health facility that she claimed on the stand I kept driving by and going in and intimidating her worker. Well, let's keep it a bean, let's keep it a book. Right hand to the man on my kid's heartbeat if they drop dead right now. I never drove by this girl's establishment. Well, not by the mental health facility. Never drove out there. Fuck I'm going to Fort Worth for. But finding out that she's being evicted from this place and then giving the people that's in that home a day to move out of the place because the man is basically going to have the writ of possession like it's his, everybody got to go type shit. And you not helping these same people who paid you? Better yet, let's just read the email so y'all can get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Dear Chessine, I'm, I'm not going to lie. We already posted this, but for some reason, it's like everybody not seeing it because they keep sh sh sending it to me. So I'm like, y'all, we already reacted to this, but we just going to react to it again. I'm writing to express my concerns and seek clarity regarding the recent situation involving the arrangements for my son and others in your care. While I understand circumstances may change, the way the situation has unfolded raises serious questions about the level of professionalism and care provided. We enter this agreement with the belief that you are acting in good faith, but your sudden shift in terms has left us with significant concerns. I'd like to know what I should expect to receive in terms of compensation via Apple Pay as previously discussed. $200 refundable deposit, $240 prorated rent, late fees the same as you charge if payment is delayed or if you expect us to vacate early rent. without just cause. <laughs> should we begin to calculate the late fees or request compensation for each day we are forced to adjust? For example, a fee of $25 per day for each day of early departure or delay in payment could be reasonable. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. Um, this is absolutely, I'm going to say sad because, um, them people got to find somewhere to stay and I can't, I was going to say it's a different type of trifling, but to be honest with you, 
that's the nasty part about business because business is business. And her taking it out of her personal money is not a part of the deal. One, one, one in the chat. So unfortunately, oh my God, that's the way the cookie crumble with business, but it's messed up because now them people got to, you know, find somewhere to stay. Reasonable. Especially evicting them in one day. Like, how is that even legal? Given the disruption this caused. Furthermore, should we also take into account all the promises you made that were not delivered? It's only fair that we evaluate these unmet commitments as part of any further discussion. It has been suggested to me to contact the relevant authorities, including APS, Adult Protective Services, given the treatment of the individuals with disabilities. Y'all millionaires do you the worst. The how she a millionaire and doing people wrong. Millionaires do you the worst. Are y'all not paying attention to everything that's going on with these millionaires out here? None of them are good people. <laughs> Under your care. So when I mention how the that's people- a, uh, That's, I'm sorry to cut you off, Sherelle. That's why I keep saying, like that whole Krishan thing. Everybody like, oh my God, get happy with um get happy with Timbaland sharing her song or whatever, remaking her, whatever. It looked like a uh not only was it a clout move, it was a move of let me be the one to mix and master the song. And now let me create it this way. He took away from how she had it and made it his own thing. That's not something to be happy about. Like uh, well, hopefully that's her song, if not. <laughs> but whoever song it was, you know what I'm saying? That ain't nothing to be happy about. Was being treated in that mental health facility. How they had the best one, the smartest one, the more competent one handing out medicine because the people that was working there quit because Danny wasn't paying them. So how you have a mental health facility, but then you have the people that's supposed to be living there receiving care doing the work of the people that you're supposed to hire to be there. But you're getting all this money from the government. They're paying you X amount of dollars monthly, but you can't pay the rent. You can't keep And then why did the government not pay her at that point? Because she said, like, she waiting on money from the government. Why? Lights on. You can't keep the Wi-Fi connected. Make it make sense. But you're always there. Well, in your messages, you only go once a month. And that's to what? Collect money. Okay. Additionally, a report to the Better Business Bureau and other professional bodies has been recommended. However, this is not a step we want to take lightly. Our intention is not to harm you or your reputation, but rather to help you make better, wiser decisions that align with integrity and professionalism. This is your opportunity to correct course and demonstrate the compassion and fairness that these individuals deserve. We want to support you in building a better reputation and improving your practices to truly benefit those in need. It is our hope that you can see this as a lifeline and an opportunity to act with integrity. There are serious ethical concerns about profiting from the vulnerability of others. I sincerely hope this is not the direction you are taking. We are all here to serve and support one another, not to exploit those in difficult situations. What is your goal in this? Is it purely financial? If so, at what cost? Do you feel at peace with the choices you are making? I pray that whatever- Clearly she at peace. For you so in kindness- <clears throat> Girl, and I damn Turks, I'm about to go to Kenya, putting, buying three, three million dollar houses out in uh, Turks, like, don't sound like she bothered to me. Fairness will prosper. But I also pray that any actions that take advantage of others will not succeed. It's never too late to make a change, and I hope you will consider taking the steps necessary to correct the situation. I look forward to your response and to working together in the best interest of all involved. And if you're a bit confused, let me break it down for you. In layman's turn, this girl was receiving money. She was receiving money for the people that was living in the, the, the little mental health home. Not only was she receiving money, people... For, that was over, like guardians or whatever, that was over the people living in that home, some of those people were paying her money via Apple Pay. But the problem arises... If she's saying that she was receiving money, but the money wasn't making a cut, making a cut of what? And she just said $800 a month. Girl, I'm... When they're already receiving money for you to be able to take care of rent, to take care of utilities, to take care of whatever it is that those people need, and you're not doing it, and now those people have to try to figure out where is this person going to go? Where am I going to send my son? Where am I going to send my brother? What other accommodations can I think of on the sly? Because you are taking money August and September, but you're not paying the rent. And here we are at eviction and you're putting us in an un uncompromised. Definitely should have raised the rent, if anything, for sure. Situation to where 
we got to disrupt our life and figure out what the fuck is going on because you can't uphold your end of the bargain, if that makes sense. You're very unprofessional. You don't like to communicate. And I feel like you're taking advantage of those who seem less fortunate to you. You're in this solely for the money. You don't give a fuck about anybody in your facility because if you did, you'd be trying to rectify the situation professionally versus me consistently having to reach out to you to figure out a resolution to the issue. That's what's going on. And it only gets worse. 6,000 emails I got to send out to a bunch of people, which is so crazy, but it's this shit is sick. And why is she sending out 6,000 emails? This shit, this shit is, this shit is just, this is low down and dirty. There is no fucking way you doing them people like that. There is no fucking way these folks are reaching out, crying, and asking for you to just be a businesswoman and you can't do it. But you consistently flexing how you out of the country, buying this, buying that, investing in this, investing in that, when you got shit here in the country that you need to take care of. But I digress. I digress. As it unfolds, I will come and untold i tried to make that rhyme it didn't but so anyway. about a month ago Dwayne shared with everyone that he actually purchased his first home now in Dwayne's recent youtube video someone asked him the question why did he purchase his home by himself when he's in a relationship with neek now this was Dwayne's response um let me see I'm on there. I'm trying to see what it is. Oh, they said, I didn't see anyone ask this question. But how does buying yourself a home further the growth of you and your partner? Y'all three years in buying individual homes. Um, and I really wanted to answer that question. Me personally, I think, you know, Neek wants her own house too. And I think you sh I think she should have her own house because as you know as the individual i think everybody should own something i he is absolutely correct <clears throat> she should buy a house for herself her and her son just to have just to own that don't necessarily mean you know um we won't have a house together are you own them i'm not gonna sit there and say you want to buy a house with me because at the end of the day say if we don't work out or something she got 10 houses to choose from and I got seven houses to choose from to go to that we just been putting in this time buying separate. And we got three, you know, to pick between, okay, yeah, we're not together no more. Well, let's, you know, whatever, sell these three houses and split everything 50-50. That's the ultimate goal. Not to say that, you know, not to be together, but that's the ultimate goal to have multiple properties. For them being young and the way they get into it with each other, that was a smart move. Period. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. I'm done with this video. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hey.